All right, chapter five and six of Mr. Popper's Penguins, written by Richard and Florence Atwater. So we're gonna read two of those today. So five and six, chapter five, the title is Trouble with Penguin. The next day was quite eventful at 432 Proudfoot Avenue. First, there was a service man, and then the policeman, and then the trouble with the license. Captain Cook was, with, was in the children's room watching Janie and Bill put together a jigsaw puzzle on the floor. He was very good about not disturbing the pieces after Bill had spanked him for eating one. He did not hear the refrigerator service man come to the back door. Mrs. Popper had gone to the market for canned shrimp for the penguin so that Mr. Popper was alone in the kitchen to explain to the service man what he wanted done to the refrigerator. The service man put his tool bag down on the kitchen floor looked at the refrigerator and then at Mr. Popper, who, to tell the truth, had not shaved yet and was still un very untidy. Mister, he said, you don't need to ventilate, no ventilating holes in that there door. It's my icebox and I want some holes bored into the door, said Mr. Popper. They argued about it for quite a while. Mr. Popper knew that to get the serviceman to do what he wanted, all he had to do was explain that he was going to keep a live penguin in the ice box and that he wanted his pet to have plenty of fresh air, even though the door was closed all night. He felt a little stubborn about explaining, however. He didn't want to discuss Captain Cook with his unsymp this unsympathetic man, who was already staring at Mr. Popper as though Mr. Popper was not quite right in the head. Come on, do what I said, said Mr. Popper. I'm paying you for it. With what, asked the service man. Mr. Popper gave him a $5 bill. It made him a little sad to think how many beans it might have bought for Mrs. Popper and the children. The service man examined the bill carefully as if he didn't trust Mr. Popper too much. But at last he put it in his pocket, took a drill from his tool bag and made five small holes in a neat pattern on the refrigerator door. Now, said, Mrs. said Mr. Popper, don't, get, don't give up. Wait a minute, there's one more thing I need. Now what, said the serviceman. I suppose now you want me to take the door off the hinges and let in a little more air. Or do you want me to make it into a radio set? Uh, into a radio set. Don't get funny, said Mr. Popper indignantly. That is no way to talk. Believe it or not, I know what I am doing. I mean, I'm having you do. I want you to fix an extra handle on the inside of the box so it can be opened from the inside of the box. That, said the service man, is a fine idea. You want an extra handle on the inside. Sure, sure, he picked up his tool bag. Aren't you going to do it for me, asked Mr. Popper. Oh, sure, sure, said the service man, edging towards the back door. Mr. Popper saw that for all of his words of agreement, the service man had no intention of putting an inside handle on. I thought you were a service man, he said. I am, and that's the first sensible thing you've said yet. You're a fine kind you're a fine kind of service man if you don't even know how to put an extra handle on the inside of an ice box door. Oh I don't. I don't, do I? Don't you think I don't know how? As far as that goes, I even got a spare handle in my tool bag and plenty of screws. You needn't think I don't know how to do it if I didn't want to. Mr. Popper silently reached into his pocket and gave the service man the last five dollar bill bill. He was pretty sure that Mrs. Popper would be annoyed at him for spending all that money, but it could not be helped. Mister, said the serviceman, you win. I'll fix your extra handle. And while I'm doing it, you sit down on that chair over there facing me where I can keep an eye on you. Fair enough, said Mr. Popper sitting down. The serviceman was sit still on the floor, putting in the final screws that held the new handle in place when the penguin came out to the kitchen on his silent pink feet. Surprised and seeing a stranger um, sitting on the floor, Captain Cook quietly walked over and began pecking him curiously. But the serviceman was even more surprised than Captain Cook. Ork, said the penguin, or perhaps it was the serviceman. Mr. Popper was not sure just what had happened when he was picking himself and the chair a moments later off the floor. There had been a shower of flying tools a violent slamming of the door, and the serviceman was gone. These sudden noises, of course, brought the children running to Mr. Popper, showing them how the refrigerator running. Mr. Popper showed them how the refrigerator was now all remodeled for the penguin. 
He showed Captain Cook, too, by shutting himself inside. The penguin at once noticed the shiny new handle inside, and he bit it with his usual curiosity. The door opened, and Captain Cook jumped out. Mr. Popper uh, promptly put Captain Cook back inside and shut the door again to be sure that the penguin learned his lesson. Before long, Captain Cook became quite skillful at getting out and was ready to be taught how to get inside when the door was shut. By the time the policeman came to the back door, Captain Cook was going in and out of the refrigerator as easily as if he had lived in one all his life. All right, chapter six, more trouble. The children were the first to notice the policeman. Look, Papa, said Billy, there's a policeman at the back door. Is he going to arrest you? Cook, said Captain Cook, walking with dignity to the door and trying to poke his beak through the screen. Hey, is this 432 Proudfoot Avenue? It is, answered Mr. Popper. Well, I guess this is the place all right, said the policeman and pointed to Captain Cook. Is that thing yours? Yes, it is, said Mr. Popper proudly. And what do you do for a living? asked the policeman sternly. Papa's an artist, said Janie. He's also, he's always getting paint and calamine all over his clothes, said Bill. I'm a house painter, a decorator, said Mr. Popper. Won't you come in? I won't, said the policeman, unless I have to. Ha ha, said Billy. The policeman is afraid of Captain Cook. Gah, said the penguin, opening his red beak wide, as if he wanted to laugh at the policeman. Can it talk, asked the policeman. What is it, a giant parrot? It's a penguin, said Janie. We keep it, keep it for a pet. Well, if it's only a bird, said the policeman, lifting his cap and scratching his head in a puzzled sort of way. From the way that fellow with the tool bag yelled at me outside, I thought there was a lion loose in here. Mama says Papa's hair looks like lion, a lion's most times, said Bill. Keep still, Bill, said Janie. The policeman doesn't care how Papa's hair looks. The policeman now scratched his chin. If it's only a bird, I suppose it's okay if you keep him in a cage. We keep him in the icebox, said Bill. You can put it in the icebox for all I care, said the policeman. What kind of bird did you say it was? A penguin, answered Mr. Popper. By the way, I might want to take him for a walk with me. Would it be all right if I keep him on a leash? I tell you, said the penguin, honestly, I don't know what the munici municipal ordinances are about penguins with or without a leash on public streets. I'll ask my sergeant. Maybe I ought to get a license for him, suggested Mr. Popper. It's certainly big enough for a license, said the policeman. I tell you what you do. You call the city hall and ask them what the ruling is about penguins. And good luck to you, Popper. He's kind of a cute little fellow, isn't he? He looks almost human. Good day to you, Popper, and good day to you, Mr. Penguin. When Mr. Popper telephoned the city hall to see about a license for Captain Cook, the penguin did his best to disconnect the telephone by biting the green cord. Perhaps he thought it was some new kind of eel. But just then Mrs. Popper came back from the market and opened a can of shrimp so that Mr. Popper was soon left all alone on the telephone. Even so, he found it was not as easy to learn whether or not he must get a license for his strange pet. Every time he would explain what he wanted, he would be told to wait a minute, and much later a new voice would ask him what he wanted. This went on for a considerable time. At last a new voice came to take the la at last a new voice seemed to take a little interest in the case. Pleased with the friendly voice, Mr. Popper began again to tell about Captain Cook. Is he an army captain, a police captain, or a navy captain? He's not, said Mr. Popper. He's a penguin. Will you repeat that, please, said the voice. Mr. Popper repeated it. The voice suggested that perhaps he better spell it. P-E-N-G-U-I-N, said Mr. Popper. Penguin. Oh, said the voice. You mean that Captain Cook's first name is Benjamin? No, not Benjamin. Penguin. It's a bird, said Mr. Popper. Do you mean, said the phone in his ear, that Captain Cook wishes a license to shoot birds? I am sorry. The bird hunting season does not open until November. And please try to speak a little more distinctly, Mr. Topper. Did you say your name is? My name is 
Popper, not Topper, shouted Mr. Penguin. Yes, Mr. Potter, now I can hear you quite clearly. Then listen, roared Mr. Popper, now completely outraged. If you folks at City Hall don't even know what, a, what penguins are, I guess you haven't any ruling saying that I can't have one, and I don't need a license. I will do without one for Captain Cook. Just a minute, Mr. Popwell. Our own Mr. Treadbottom from the Bureau of Navigation and Lakes, Rivers, Ponds, and Streams has just come in. I will let you speak to him personally. Perhaps he knows this Benjamin Cook of yours. In a moment, a new voice was speaking to Mr. Popper. Good morning. This is the Automobile License Bureau. Did you have the same car last year? And if so, what was the license number? Mr. Popper had been switched over to the county building. He decided to hang up. Okay, you're going to take the blue paper and fold it in half and then fold it in half again the long way and then you're going to cut them along those lines. So they're all cut into individual squares. On this side, you're going to look up facts about the penguins, the four different kinds of penguins. Put the name of the penguin, what family, where does it live, what does it eat, and some fun facts about it. So you're going to do that for each one of them. And on this side, you're going to draw a picture of that penguin because there's all different kinds of, of penguins. So research some penguins. So all penguins are in the Sphenicidae family. So this is this is the name of the family they're in, Sphenicidae, and it's a very weird word, but it means aquatic birds. So for family on your card, um, you can either write Sphenicidae or you can write aquatic birds. So all of them will be in the same family. So you can fill that in on all four cards very quickly. After you color it, you're going to cut it out. Then see the dotted lines, you're gonna fold it on those dotted lines and at the bottom also. So it makes a little pouch for your cards. And then we're gonna glue it on the board. And on your board, you're gonna glue it up in the top left-hand corner. You're gonna stick your cards in. So you have all four of your cards up there in that top pocket. It's so right above your globe, right up there. So. So far, this is what your poster should look like. It's coming along. <laughs>